Welcome to this interview with Claudia Alighier, a Spanish ballerina working with the Bulgarian state opera. We had a really interesting conversation about how different countries are dealing very different with the arts during the corona crisis and how more poor countries seemingly have a much richer culture compared to the more developed countries. Before we start, a big thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you want to become a supporter to Cap de la Vie as well, there will be more information about Patreon at the end of this video, as well as in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and let's start right into the interview. In that case, I would say let's just start with a short introduction of yourself, so the viewers know who you are. Uh, my name is Claudia Alighier and I'm a ballet dancer in the State Opera Plovdiv in Bulgaria since uh, three years ago. Uh, I'm 23 years old and well, I'm from uh, Berga, that is a small town, um, one hour and a half far from Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> How did you start to become an artist? And I mean, you're you're working there in the opera now and in the as a ballerina. But how did it uh, all start for you? How did you end up becoming a dancer? Well, I have to say that it was hard because, uh, as I say, I'm from a small town, and to go to ballet, like to dance professionally, I had to go to Barcelona uh every day so i had to traveling i was in i was uh, young and i was in the high school so i had like almost two hours every day with the bus so it was double effort for me as a normal person you know and um and then at the age of 17 i i had the opportunity to to have a scholarship in uh, to study in America so I I went uh, I studied one year in uh, Joffrey Ballet New York and one year in Joffrey Ballet Chicago and that was like a great experience just like for me as an artist and to become a better artist and to become a better person also so I'm very happy that I had this opportunity and after that, um, I came back to Barcelona and I started uh, searching uh, for a job. And yes, and this is my first job here, but this is the, the, oh, the fourth season. So I'm really happy here. Yeah. You say that when you were starting out, uh, you always had to travel so far to Barcelona to, yeah. to have your classes. It was difficult also to find um, the right direction, the, the right way to study because I didn't know like anything almost about um, ballet world. So it was hard, yes. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, was it you yourself that knew already okay i want to study dance or was it your your parents or your environment that was suggesting this actually i don't remember so much how it was but uh, my mom always explained me that one day after school i i was i think four years old and i told her that i wanted to to study dance and um so i asked her Please, can you, um, can I go to a ballet school? And because I, I think that I, I would like that. And since then, when I saw that I was, uh, improving every day, um, I think that was when I started, um, feeling that, that passion for, for dance, I think. Um, what is it in ballet that since you were small and still till now that still keeps you so fascinated and interested yes. in ballet? What is it? Yeah, like um, I think this, the, the progress, that the improvement of um, every day, the work, the hard work, this is what 
uh, keeps me like the same passion or even more than the first day. So yeah, like I wake up every day and it's like, oh, I love my job. I love what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's very nice yeah. to hear. Um, now in December, I think it was, I'm not sure. No, in May. 2020 it was, we published a video of yours called um, La Danza de la Vida. Yes. And I'm intrigued, how did this video dance project come together? What was the inspiration and how did it all happen? Um, well, you know Danny from Cata la Via. So he's, um, he was studying in the same school as me in Barcelona. So I know him and um, he told me that he started this project like Capta La Via, this channel. And he asked me if I could collaborate uh, with a video or to the channel. So I, at the first moment, I thought maybe I can send him um, some old videos, me dancing or, but then he messaged me when it was in the first lockdown uh, and um, like all of us we were at home so I thought that maybe I could create uh, or record some new video so I it's when a person in my mind this idea of to record the, the video of uh, La Danza de la Vida and uh, Yes, I started first with uh, the idea that we were um, all of us inside our houses, but one day uh, we will um, go outside and uh, we will live again our lives as, as before. So uh, in the video, I wanted to to, to express this feeling and I played with um, with colors with uh, yeah if you see the video it's um, all the colors it means that there is like there is a still light um, for our life so one day we will live again as uh, as before the pandemic <laughs> I think what you say right now is, is very clear in the video as well how you are using the the video technique of bringing color back into your surrounding but as it well was a bit, it was a bit hard to choreograph this because the place is it's a garden of my grandparents and um, i didn't have so much a space for the like for ballet and ponchos work so i had to try to do some steps that work it in, in this space and also my, one of my friends that is um, um, designer, video designer, he, she helped me to, to do the, the editation of the video and to film me. And so without her, it, it will be impossible. <laughs> what I found interesting there in the video is how both the editing and the video technique, um, as well as the dance technique very much came together because Okay, in the video, you give color in the editing uh, throughout the video, but as well with the point technique and the ballet technique that is inside the video, it very much gives this lightness to it. And I yeah. think that was very well coming together in that, in that project. Yeah, and I tried to find also because in this garden, there are many plants and many, like sometimes uh, there was like a bird there. So we, we were looking for um, something to make like a great video and uh, um, there was just a small, um, a small parts of the floor that I could dance because the other parts were um, grass. So with the point shoes, it's not good to dance there. But I think um, it was a nice video and yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, now, you already mentioned how this video came together amidst this whole pandemic. How has since then as well your your life as an artist somewhat changed? I mean, 
it's 2021 now so it's yeah. almost a year or pretty much a year since the first lockdown so how has your life as an artist and as a performer changed in the meantime and in general what is your life like now with the pandemic well, um i have to say that during these three months of lockdown it was hard because all of us we were inside our houses and and everything was closed we couldn't develop us as an artist as before but we could uh, we started ma to create some different things as this video or maybe other artists create different projects. So I think that was good for ourselves to, to, to think and to create um, a project that usually we never have time or we, because we are always very busy and uh, a lot of work. So this time it was good to create and stuff, but um, after that, after these three months, I came back to, to Bulgaria because here again started, like I was lucky, lucky I have to say, because um, I know that most of the companies around the world were closed for so long. And, um, but here in Bulgar, in, in Plovdiv, uh, we could, uh, dance all summer. Um, now is still open. Like we, we keep, uh, keep dancing and that, that's great. I think like it's, um, for me, I feel that I'm, uh, I'm lucky to, to have. Yes. Sure. Yeah. We had some productions in summer, we danced Giselle and um, yeah, now uh, we did just the premiere of Bayader uh, last week. We had to do it like the premiere had to be like uh, in uh, October, but for the COVID reasons, it was um, postponed until uh, until now, but finally we could uh, manage to dance that. So, yeah, almost as normal. You say almost as normal uh, for, for me right now, that's the dream world. Um, <laughs> how is the, the situation in general in Bulgaria? I, I don't know a lot about um, how the COVID is developing there. There's not so much yeah. in the news. Uh, well, until, I have to say maybe until November, it, it seems that COVID didn't exist here because we could do like normal, <coughs> sorry, we could uh, do normal our, um, the, we, uh, the, everything was opened. Uh, so for me, I feel that the, the virus here didn't exist until November, but Yes, and uh, from November, the situation started um, getting worse, worse and worse. And then uh, we had like some days that we couldn't go to war because some of us were in quarantine or some of my colleagues got the, the coronavirus. But, but it was not like before, after Christmas. It's it was again good like as normal so yeah we could manage uh, it was not that bad as other countries yes now because you're very much internationally connected as well um, how do you see the arts in general now during this crisis as in many countries things can't happen as usual, performances are all cancelled, entire tours of lots of companies can't happen and have to be postponed. Um, you say in Bulgaria there, there things could still happen. How do you see the, um, the difference there for, for the audience and for the rest of society with in Bulgaria them still having access to art and in other countries not? Where do you see the difference there. Yeah, one thing that I would like to say is that, for example, in in Spain, 
the first thing that were closing um, during this pandemic was theaters before other jobs, you know. And because I think that in Spain there is not this tradition, this culture for um, music, dance, like art in general. And um, for example, here in Bulgaria, it was the last thing that mm, they closed. Um, like the big um, shopping centers were closed, the restaurants were closed, and uh, the bars were closed, and theaters with 30% of audience, but we, we call it still uh, working, and so... Yes, for me, this is the, 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 the biggest different be, be, differences between uh, countries, you know. I think it's a, an interesting observation to see how different countries have dealt or are dealing with this pandemic because I'm in Germany right now and theaters are still closed and um, until a few months ago I was still in Italy. There theaters are closed as well and were also some of the things that closed relatively early on and what I'm in my own work I'm always working with um, the relationship of the performer to the audience as a performer so I'm always quite curious okay how does this affect the people to take away the arts do you I don't know if you have any observations about this when you compare Spain and Bulgaria, for example, how it is for the general public. Yeah, I mean, it seems that always art is the last, the last thing in the queue, you know, like it's, uh, but actually um, art, it's, they are very important for our society, for the emotional, emotional part of ourselves. Without the arts, um, our lives will be very depressing, much, much different. And we saw during this month that we really need arts uh, in our lives. And I don't know, I, I would like that, that this pandemic um, help to the, the world to see that the arts are necessary and uh, and that we cannot uh, survive without uh, them, you know, like it's a very important part of um, of our lives. And on the one hand side that we cannot survive without them, as, uh, but the other way around as well, that life without the artists, on the other hand, would be a very grey and, yeah. like in your video, a very colourless and heavy yeah. world. Um, so with the video that you made, um, this message is obviously now very much tied into the Corona crisis, but is there something in that as well that you want that people keep in their minds and learn for after this crisis? No, it's basically, basically this, that there is always a uh, hope, hope and uh, that even if we don't see um, a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, always, uh, there is always um, a solution of our problems and just keep working, keep creating and, and yes, uh, I mean, it will be better soon, I hope, <laughs> everything. Yes, well, right now here they just extended the lockdown again for another month um, and many other countries in Europe as well so we'll see but the hope is there so we see how yeah. it will go um, will yes I'm just very curious how the world will have changed with this crisis once it's over how society will be and how our I mean, we always say to have a normal life again, but we yeah. can't just go back to normal. I hope this normal. will be a lesson also, but mm -hmm. I hope that, um, I hope life will be better than before, um, to appreciate more the little things 
that um, that we didn't uh, appreciate before that so i hope it will it will be better i really hope that yeah what are the lessons that you're taking yourself out of this crisis to be positive to enjoy the the little things the to going out um going uh, i don't know to see uh, the sun's shine the <laughs> to appreciate these kind of things and um yeah like I think happiness is the most uh, is the thing that all of us should have this uh, objective in life and um, yeah I think that's the most important now as artists uh, in most countries um, can't really work at the moment there's a lot the the need for support from the side of the government for artists and in some countries it happens sometimes better sometimes worse um, how is it for you i mean you said you're you're able to work so i imagine you're not as much in a yeah. crisis but in general because uh, the opera where i work is a, a state of from the state so um, um for now like they have they told us that they have uh, enough um, um uh, support like economy support for us for uh, at least half year so so yes i have a contract for one more year so i'm i'm happy to to have a contract during this these moments because it's not it's not easy and i hope yeah i hope will be get better soon <laughs> everything i i don't um, as an artist we don't probably or oh, most of the artists will tell you that we don't earn so many money um but as we love our jobs, um, yes, the money is important, but um, of course it will be better to get better paid. But um, for now I'm, I'm happy where I am and uh, what I'm doing, so yeah. Now you have a contract, um, but do you know how it is in Bulgaria as well for all the smaller independent artists that are freelancing how is their situation in bulgaria at the moment um i think the the salary for uh, for an artist in bulgaria is uh, is not the lowest as other countries maybe it's like the standard salary so that's good but of course bulgaria is a poor country and uh, the salary, the standard salary is not, mm, if you compare from other countries, it's, it's nothing. But to survive and to live here, it's, it's, it's fine. Like, uh, yes. Yeah, it's always important to put it into the context, obviously, in how much expenses do you have in the country compared to how much you earn. So to just put a number doesn't really work. It's true. Yeah, exactly. Um, how I'm I'm fascinated right now that in Bulgaria, as um, as a poor country, um, that art is so dominant there and having such a dominant role compared to other European countries that <clears throat> always call themselves so cultured and civilized and so much with so much wealth um, and in the end then there is a quite poor country like Bulgaria but to me it very much sounds like that they are not rich in money maybe but they have a very rich culture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. totally like that so I think most of the the east countries in Europe they are 
they have more uh, rich culture and uh, tradition for for art and that's great i hope uh, all the the world can have this example and <laughs> yeah um do you have any idea why that is if you compare spain and bulgaria you i guess you see very clear differences as well but where do they come from i don't know but like for example here in um, in where i work um many shows uh um, we dance for um uh, for kids so the very young people see ballet since they are young and i think this is important because when you are a kid and you go to the theater and you see a, a ballet or a concert then you start to to develop yourself and then you can choose if you like or not but in spain i think there is not this uh like kids doesn't go to the the theater that much like or so people there is not um a knowledge uh, since you are um, a child so i think that's one of the problems of the different uh, societies maybe that sounds like a problem though that is something that could be easily fixed in a way and yeah. to to change for the the upcoming generations yeah because if you ask too many people in spain or in other countries um, most of them may them maybe didn't ha they haven't seen any ballet in all the or all their lives and that's you know i think that's one of the problems when i look at the situation here in germany and for example talk with my parents um they they haven't seen a ballet show either and but not because they're not interested but because they yeah, think it is not something for them it is more something no, about the society you cannot say that they don't like because yeah. they don't know it actually they don't know it but they also don't really feel like it's their place to go to because the theater is very much labeled as this place for the higher society and the the rich people that go to watch a ballet um yeah. for their own pleasure but that yeah. the the middle class doesn't have space no, and there. here all the tickets everything is very cheap like um so f for everyone everyone is able to go to the theater if uh, like it's it's not a money problem i think it's a uh, you know i think this will be also much easier if uh, if it will be the the price for to go to the theater will be more as a gift for all the, the 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 population you know that's you you probably have some insight into that but what is the um, to keep the the price for the theaters relatively low and on the entrance um that usually means as well okay that the production costs themselves can't be that high because you have to calculate does it work in bulgaria because the state is supporting that much yeah the the states are they support because sometimes i don't understand how with the price that they sell the tickets how can we survive you know but um, but it's because the state um help to the the opera a lot and uh, and there is not in the opera there is not the ballet there is uh, also music uh, singers so uh, there are many shows actually uh, in a week so and it's always full in summer for example uh, in, in in winter it's uh, we dance inside and it's like no, a normal small theater but in uh, in summer we dance in the in a Roman theater that it's very very nice outside and uh, there is capacity for, I think, uh, almost 3,000 people 
or 3,000 something people. So, uh, and it's always full. They made many shows and it's always, always full. So that's when I dance there, it's like, wow, you know. It makes me very intrigued to, to come to Bulgaria actually and, and experience the culture there when I hear this. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't expect actually when I arrived here in Bulgaria, but I have to say that I'm very happy here and, uh, and yes, like I didn't expect that much because it's a country that I didn't know that much also, but, but yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds very beautiful and very much alive and full of colors and communities as well coming together and experiencing art together when you talk about those big Roman theaters outdoors it's very beautiful yeah um hearing this I'm always curious okay why how can it be that in, in developed and rich countries like like Germany where I am from um but also like most countries of Europe, actually, how can it be that culture has such a low status somewhat, that culture is something that developed for the rich people only, but that there is not the access for the middle and lower classes to it. And because for me, theater, ideally, for me at least, is a place where all the different classes, let's say, come together to experience something together. So there is, you form a community and you form an exchange yeah. with the rest of the population there. And through this exchange, you grow much more together as, as a community, independent of how much you earn. And I think it's very important, especially yeah, looking at, at the political situations that are happening right now with so much discrimination and racism and all of those things. I believe personally that a lot of that is to do as well because people don't get in touch with other people that have less than you. Yeah. And I very much see the theater as well in a, in a responsibility and as a role inside of society to to create that point of contact. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think, something that we can really learn from, from what you're saying and your experiences there in Bulgaria. It's very interesting. Yeah, we should learn of this kind of societies. How is it for you when you are in, in Spain and you see how things are going on there with, with culture and with the arts in society? Well, I always say that for me, I really would like to work in, in, to dance in Barcelona or, but unfortunately this is impossible because there are, there is a company in Barcelona, but the salary for dancers about what I know is nothing. So, uh, I knew since the beginning that I started Mm, I that I wanted to to become a dancer. I knew that I had to. I will in some day I will have to to go to live abroad because. And that's very sad because I really would like to dance where I am from. That all my family, my friends came to see me and um, and not always have to travel if they want to see. To dance me you know to see me dance sorry <laughs> and um yes that's very sad i i i i really hope this in a years will will change and i hope it will be the possibility in the future to to dance with a good salary with a good conditions in in, in Barcelona, in well, in Spain in general, yes. Well, maybe now in this crisis, that is something that might change and 
looking at uh, the demonstrations that are happening from all kinds of theater workers fighting yeah, for there is also, recognition. There is very good talent, I think, in yes, in um, Catalonia, in, in uh, and so we should. Um, I don't know. I think this talent has to. We we should be able to dance in our uh, in our uh, homes in our cities, and not always to live our all or our life um, abroad. So yeah. Thank you for watching. You've made it until the end of this video, so I assume you enjoyed what you saw. Share all your thoughts, feelings and opinions with us in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Cut la Vie and activate the bell to always stay up to date on all of our content. As you enjoy our work, you should check out our Patreon. By becoming a Patreon, you not only support our work, but you also gain special access to the full-length interviews, early access to all of our regular content, behind the scenes access to all of our Cap de la Vie original productions and you gain access to all of us. Patreon is the living room of our community where you can get to know other creatives and start new exciting collaborations. I see you over there or else next week. We bring you new artists every Friday and new interviews every Sunday.